Hello and welcome to the Liz Experiment YouTube channel. This is the channel where I record field notes from my journey towards architecting my best life. And I am here again in beautiful Jalapa, Mexico, the capital city of the state of Veracruz. I'm taking a break from house sitting, taking in a new culture, learning about a new language and a new people and a new way of life. Um, and this week I was going to do things a little bit differently by telling you a few stories about what I learned and what I was working on. So let's get into it. Life's a foolish game. Do you ever feel the same? Well, maybe we could change. So as I mentioned in the intro, I wanted to do things a bit differently today, meaning um, I usually list out the things I've learned and the things I've worked on and that's it. But I was thinking I would just kind of highlight the things that I learned and then tell you a couple stories about how I learned them and worked on them. And um, it would be really helpful if you could tell me if you like this format or not in the comments below after you watch this episode to the very end. Um, and just let me know. I just thought it would be, I, I was so impacted by my weekend that I thought it would be fun to, to tell you more, more about it in a story format. So it's only been four or five days since I last recorded, but a lot has happened and I have learned a lot. And the first thing that I learned is that the Mexican people are some of the most generous and kind and wonderful people that I have ever met. Um, I highly recommend coming to Mexico and staying in a non-tourist area. Uh, I have yet to meet somebody who's um, been unkind to me. Of course, those people exist. Of course, there is a, is a, confer a concern for safety. Um, but in a place like Jalapa, as long as you take the proper precautions, I have, I have met nothing but wonderful, wonderful people. Um, the second thing I learned is that we humans, especially we Americans who value material goods oh so much, can live with a lot less material things than we think we can. And I'm talking a lot less. Um, and we can do that and still have a very meaningful and beautiful life. And in fact, I would argue that the less stuff we carry with us, the more meaningful and beautiful our life becomes. So that was, a, that was an important lesson or a reminder of a lesson. I also learned that being in a country really is a good way to learn more about and practice the language. And it's really been great being here in Mexico because people, um, well, at least in Jalapa, they, you know, don't switch to English. Maybe they don't know it or they just uh, would rather speak Spanish because it's their language. Um, but they're very kind about it and they help me a lot. And they and they always tell me what what I'm supposed to be saying and how I'm supposed to be saying it. And it's it's awesome. So that, that has been a really fun learning experience. And the fourth and final thing is, I didn't quite expect this, but I learned that the country, at least again here in Jalapa of Mexico, has some really um, relief inducing, is that a word? Similarities to the United States uh, than, I realized, than I realized. And and of course it has some differences as well. It's a different, entirely different country. But there are the similarities, like the power outlets are the same, uh, and I don't know, there are different cultural similarities um, that I took for granted when I hadn't traveled as much before. So let me tell you a few stories about what I did this week. So the first thing that really, or the biggest thing that impacted me was my Airbnb hosts who are amazing. I will put a link to their listing again in the show uh, description area. But they invited me with them to this rural village that's about an hour, hour and a half away, um, where they go to donate clothes and shoes and toys for children uh, every so often. And um, we were, they were going to go and make the donation, and then they were going to hike the local roads and just kind of see the amazing views because it was it's pretty high up, 9,000 feet, 3,000 meters. Uh, and they invited me to go with them. So I went. And... Um, I, I mean, I could, I probably could find some softer language around it, uh, but it's a very poor village. And the people didn't have much, much. They didn't have much. They had um, uh, outdoor uh, laundry area. There were no laundry machines. Like you washed it in this, you washed it like you did back when before you had laundry machines there was a community water source and 
you know, wringing out and washing areas, and that's what you did. Um, most of the village was farmers. They didn't have many shops, uh, so they had to get, um, there, would, there would be people that would come around in, like, vegetable trucks and sell food and stuff, and otherwise you grew your food, and that's what you lived off of. So we got to the village, and we went to the home of the woman who um, is in charge of distributing the donations. And they met her through uh, the University of Veracruz. Santa, I was going to say Santa Cruz. Do you see that, United States? But the University of Veracruz. Um, and I immediately just uh, took in the village. You know, I tried to humble myself as much as possible because one, you're in a you're in somebody else's village. So that's how that's how I try to travel. Um, and so we met the woman at her home, as I said, we gave her the items, and then we were going to walk from, we left the car that we traveled in at her home, and we were going to walk through the village, and there were roads that went around the village. Um, and I'm assuming people use those to get to either homes that were even more rural, or to like crops, or to cows, uh, livestock. And before we went on the walk, the woman uh, allowed us to use her restroom. And what a humbling experience. I mean, I, I say this as somebody who has have, had the privilege to live in a, as a middle income person in the United States. Um, and I recognize that, that privilege. But if you haven't had the chance to see how poorer populations around the world live, I highly recommend not that you go and see it like it's a freaking tourist attraction because it's not. They're living their life just fine and they're happy with or without you seeing it. But I think it's a good lesson for all of us. Um, and so her home was about two rooms of, of um, you know, made from concrete. And there were two beds, which however many people used. And the bathroom was out back and there, were no, there was no light. There was no electricity. There was no flushing. You know, it was very primitive by modern day standards um but it worked and more than it worked like they were living their life they were happy people seemingly i'm sure they had hard times and and got down on their luck and all of those feelings but it wasn't as if the world was was ending for them that was just their life and they still managed to be kind and compassionate and helpful and I think that's a real, that was a really big moment for me and a very reflective, it was something I reflect on for the rest of the walk. And so we walked up through the roads, which are made of stone and dirt, like it's not like they're paved. And we were walking to get to one of the higher views. And along the way, um, we met a farmer, just a random farm out in the middle of nowhere who approached us. And luckily my hosts are from Mexico, so they speak fluent Spanish. And he just was super kind to us and told us there was a shortcut through up and around and and was just so helpful. And then he went his own way and we went our way. Um, and we, because of him, we saved a lot of time and a lot of effort. But during that walk, I couldn't help reflect on the experiences that I was having, which were so supremely human. And I bring that up because for me, what I really worked on was recognizing my own humanity, recognizing how I've used stuff and activities and uh, a running narrative in my head to ignore that humanity, and um, just really just sit in gratitude for being welcomed into their humanity and being able to see the lesson learned. So that was a really um, huge, huge thing for me. The other part, the other story is really just my experience in here in Jalapa. I have been, you know, nervous to use my Spanish because I know I'm, I know I stick out like a sore thumb. I know I'm a gringa. I, I, I am very aware of that. Um, but I've been really pushing myself to try to use Spanish as much as possible and to try to get out of the house as much as possible. And because of the people here, honestly, um, that has been much easier. So. Uh, I was able to get a taxi and each driver has been kind and professional and helpful. Um, as I said, people are always helping me use my Spanish. I went to a cafe yesterday where this is part of the similarities to the States. It was very much set up 
for working. Like it was a coffee shop slash lunch place. They had outlets everywhere. They had great Wi-Fi. They also had a terrace with amazing views. Um, but, and it, I mean, obviously it's all a great um, change. So that, th- those moments of getting out have been, have been very helpful. And lastly, I got invited to um, a family's uh, Dia de los Muertos celebration. They were over here practicing English with my host, and I came down and helped them practice English. And one thing led to another, and now I'm going to a local Dia, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead celebration on November 2nd. So I will be sure to tell you how that goes. Um, I guess the last thing that I've, I've, the last mini story that I've kind of noticed this week is I've been, as the night comes, falls, and and I'm here in Mexico, I have been noticing some really, really incredible loneliness. But I've also started to recognize that I'm choosing that loneliness and that I'm not really alone. Um, I'm alone, but I have friends, I have people inviting me to their homes, I can go out in the city, I can do other things, and so... I would say, I say all that to say, the next time you're feeling super lonely, ask yourself if you're really alone or if you're just telling yourself a story. Okay, so in the four or five days since I recorded, a lot has happened. I'm loving it here. There are some hard things happening. Uh, the work is happening and it's, and it's all good. Next week, I will be still here in Jalapa. I'm sure I'll have plenty more stories to share with you. Um, If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have something to add, please do so in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to get these videos every week, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'd like to thank Hans Adam and Featuring Snowflake for the music that I use in the intro and the outro. And until next week, thanks for watching.